It has been 18 years now Zan has grown to be a strong young man, but his life was not anything like the other kids around him. He was restricted from going to the river by his father, and he was also not very welcomed by the adults in the village because of his unusual strength and abilities. He had been told by the villagers that his father, Ninzam, was a stranger who impregnated a mentally ill Nala, who drowned herself in the river, and Ninzam had made him vow to never go to the river. Even if his life growing up was rough, he grew to be a strong young boy. He was known for his adventurous spirit and kind heart, and was popular among his peers. Zan always had one reoccurring dream. He would see flashes of himself in a black hole, flashes of himself wearing a crown, also disturbing scenes of a woman screaming on a battlefield, where a man is lying dead and an ominous humming being sung in the background. Zan would tell his father Ninzam this dream, but Ninzam would tell him, as long as Zan promised not to go to the river and never sing the humming melody, they would be all right. One evening, Zan was playing a game with his friends, and the loser of the game would be blindfolded and carried to any of the players' houses. Unknown to Nam, his friends planned to carry him to the very river. He always refused to go. He finally lost the game and was blindfolded and carried by his friends and tossed into the river. He quickly got up in disbelief and removed the blindfold. He shouted, You know my father made me vow to never come to this river. Why would you... Before he could finish his sentence, he stopped and heard movements around the water. He turned to his friends. Guys, do you hear that? Zan said. Heads suddenly popped out of the surface of the water coming closer towards him, and as the heads got closer, he saw there were mermen warriors. His friends screamed, Zan, get out of the water! But before he could move, the humming depths appeared from underneath him and swallowed him. The mermen searched the water in confusion, but couldn't find him. They glanced over at Zan's friends and sank back into the water. Zan's friends ran to the village to inform Ninzam of what had happened. Ninzam, Ninzam, the river and some mermen have swallowed Zan. Ninzam got up immediately and sprinted towards the river, diving head first into the river. But before he could get any further, he was ambushed and captured by the Masoldias. Zan, on the other hand, found himself on a shore with a woman looking down at him. No way this is real. Our king has arrived, she screamed. Zan, confused, looked around. Where am I? This place looks familiar. Who are you? He asked. I am Saulier, watcher of the sea. I am here to guide you to the city, the woman said. Another woman started coming from a distance, and Sauli turned to her. Go and tell Nala and the city that our king has come. The woman turned around and ran back towards the direction she was coming. Zan was shocked and filled with excitement. Do you mean Nala my mother? He asked, with a smile accompanied by a teary eye. Yes, Salia replied. He jumped to his feet eagerly. Let us go see her. Take me to her. Zan said, I definitely will. Salia replied, but before they could move any further, a mob of women approached them. Our king is here! Our king is here! They screamed. He was pulled here and there, but he held tight to Salia as they made their way to the city. Zan marvelled at the beauty and unrealistically breathtaking architecture of the city. Salia brought him into a room, and there he found a beautiful woman standing eagerly beside the bed as she saw Zan. She put her hands to her mouth and started crying. Mom, is that you? Zan said. Nala started crying, and she ran towards Zan, hugging him tightly. I have missed you so much, my little king, Nala said with tears pouring down her cheeks. Dad said you were gone, but I always knew you were hidden somewhere. I have seen you in dreams. Mom, I miss you, Zan said. Nala looked at his face and touched his head. I was saved by the Queen of Light and Life. She kept me alive after the incident on the day of your birth. I have always dreamed of this day when I will meet my little king again. How's your father? Nala said. 
Father is safe in the village, he always told me. Never to go to the village, even if I tell him my strange dreams. He misses you, and he never goes there also because of you, said Zan. What strange dreams? Nala asked. Mom, I see you and a man on the battlefield. He lying on the floor, and you screaming, and a strange humming sound that father told me never to sing again, Zan replied. Nala looked at Zan with an eye of sympathy and understanding. I am so sorry you had to go through this by yourself. We have a lot to discuss. But we must go meet the queen. She's expecting you, Nala said.